Welcome to your Retirement Solution Podcast. Imagine the value in knowing exactly what day you could retire and have the income you wanted for the rest of your life. Listen on to explore the strategies that are designed to set you on track to living your happily ever after in retirement. Now on to the show with your host, Matt Halloran. Hello and welcome to episode number 13 with Jim Black. Today, we are going to break down President Trump's new tax plan. Now, Jim, I know that there is a lot involved here. Is there any way that you could do us a favor and sum up some of the major points that you think are going to impact your clients in 2018? Oh, absolutely. There is, as you pointed out, a ton of things going on with this. And it's interesting as I look at the pieces, how they kind of roll together. The first thing that I noticed, at least the most important thing for me, was the way they set it up. What I noticed was that tax cuts are temporary. So basically all of these these tax cuts that we're seeing really have a sunset provision, meaning that they go away at a certain point. What was interesting on the other side, though, was that the tax cuts for businesses are permanent, which is probably a good thing as we kind of go through all the pieces. We extended the brackets, as I think most people know, and it should actually, in my opinion, lower people's tax bill. There's still seven of them. I know they were talking about having only three. They stretched it to seven. And so the reality is, is I've run through this with a number of clients at this point. Mm -hmm. For the most part, for people who who had the same income this year that they had last year, we're actually seeing some some deductions, you know. From I think the lowest what I've seen so far was about a thousand to around you know fifty five hundred is kind of the general one we're seeing. I have seen a few what I would consider outliers that uh, the difference was you know north of sixteen thousand dollars in taxes, hmm. but they they had a pretty good income level too. So that's the first thing really in my mind to kind of keep a keep a kind of a handle on. The other kind of in my mind real kicker is the emphasis on eliminating those who file itemized deductions. Mm -hmm. In previous years, if you got a standard deduction and a personal exemption, that was kind of the, the tradition. Now, the personal exemption, of course, is gone. And the standard deduction has been increased to 24000 for a couple. The personal exemption was for just over $4,000 each. So a married couple with one child would have gotten $24,850 for a previous deduction. Now, under the new rules, they just get the 24 k So in, the, in that scenario, people are actually getting less of a deduction than they got before. But the other kicker in my mind was the miscellaneous deductions. So if you were doing miscellaneous deductions, deductions for your CPA, deductions for assets under management, all of that has been eliminated. OK, mm -hmm. the other one that uh, I just came into because uh, I just had the situation come up is divorce is now can be a more costly situation. You may remember in the past there was some discussion over who got the deduction and who had to pay taxes for it. Going forward, people who get divorced, alimony is no longer no longer deductible for the payer. Hmm. And of course, then for the pay for the recipient, it's no longer taxable either. So that's I suppose it'll, it simplifies it on the recipient side. And the other big piece that we're hearing about here in the state of Washington is the SALT deductions. A lot of people are getting confused with the SALT deductions and the fact that they changed mortgage interest. So let's maybe take a minute and clarify that as well. Perfect. So SALT stands for state and local taxes. So here, we don't have an income tax in the state of Washington yet, but I do see that... Uh, Olympia is working on it. They're trying to put one in, so we'll see what happens. But um, if there is an income tax plus our property taxes, um, the limit is $10,000 a year. So the most you can deduct is $10,000 regardless of how much you actually pay. So um, it's not unusual in these areas these days, especially in King County, to have – property taxes in the you know twelve fifteen eighteen thousand dollar range mm -hmm. and simply put you can only deduct ten um if they had an income tax on top of that there'll be no basically no deduction for the income tax at all okay mm. and then as I mentioned to kind of clarify seven the uh, mortgage interest mortgage interest is still okay you still get to take mortgage interest they just simply lowered the amount so on top of the salt you get to have a mortgage up to $750,000, and that's all deductible. So not a big deal. There is some question on home equity loans. It appears that home equities are no longer deductible, which hmm. is kind of interesting. I'll, we'll see if that one holds up. It's not unusual when they come up with these new tax bills to have them make adjustments and changes and clarifications along the way. 
Um, I kind of expect that with this one as well. Okay. okay. Oh, you know what? Another one I probably ought to, ought to mention is if you've got children, uh, the one there was a couple of winners. Let's talk about winners for a minute because there were people with a, a few that won here. Um, okay. If you have children, the tax credit has actually been increased to two thousand dollars per child, and that is on incomes up to four hundred thousand dollars. So. Hmm. The cutoff before was barely over 100. Now it's gone all the way up to 400,000. And if this happens to you, it happens to a lot of my clients where they, you may have a parent living with you. You can actually deduct that parent um, up to $500 for each on that as well. Hmm. 529s. That's, let's talk about 529s for just a second. Okay. So if you have a child who or a grandchild who potentially may be going to college, a 529 has been something to think about. The advantage of a 529 is that the interest that accumulated on that account could be tax-free if you used it for college tuition, etc. That has been loosened up greatly now to where you could use that 529 to pay for a computer. Mm -hmm. You could use that 529 to pay for private school prior to even graduation. So that's that's a positive for people who are out there saving. You know, the last thing I would I would say on kind of the tax thing to be aware of is, and I need to talk about this just because everybody has heard about this, and that is what happened to the corporations. So yeah. whether you have a corporation or not, they change the rules. So we were in a 35% tax bracket for corporations, which was pretty high. In fact, one of the highest in the world. And now they've dropped it down to a much more competitive 21%. Although Ireland still has the lowest at 10%, it's definitely better. I mean, it's kind of moving in the right direction. But the other issue that kind of goes hand in hand with that is this concept of the pass-through entities. Anybody out there who has income from pretty much any source other than a W-2, if you don't have a pass-through entity, and a pass-through entity is things like an LLC or a C-Corp or anything like that, where you're, it's generating revenue, but you're paying it on your own taxes. If you have that kind of income and you don't have a, a pass-through ent entity created, my direction to you guys is pay it now because you get a 20% deduction for whatever income is generated through that thing. Can you imagine 20% off and then you only pay taxes on the remaining 80%? That's a pretty cool deal. That's a big win. I have clients who have rental properties who are getting them into pass-through entities. I have clients who have been doing some contracting on the side, doing just a, you know, a, a Schedule C on their tax return. We're doing, we're doing all kinds of different adjustments here, either turning those into S-Corps or LLCs to take advantage of that. That's probably the biggest win that I think we can take as, as individuals out there, not being big multinational corporations. So as an advisor to people who you, you actually have worked with a lot of people who have businesses, do you think that's going to be the largest piece of advice or joint work that you're going to be doing with the tax professional? Is that one of the biggest changes you're going to see with your financial services practice because of this tax plan? It's certainly the simplest and the most obvious. I mean, okay. we're, this is something that everybody needs to be doing if they're not. I mean, this is a freebie. There's not very often you get a freebie from the government, mm -hmm. but to get a write off of 20% off the top, it's really making me rethink some of the things we do around here. It's like, hey, maybe I want to create another entity. Mm -hmm. You do have some limitations on the top end, and it can make sense to have even a few multiple entities that are doing different things have that uh, pay income come through there so that you're not capped out on it. But yeah, so I would say certainly that's one change that people ought to be looking at right away. Another thing people ought to be really considering is taking a look at what they're doing on their personal side. So, you know, you've got your exemptions, you've got your expenses. Well, some of those exemptions that you've been paying for flat disappeared. I mean, a lot of people used miscellaneous expenses that have been completely wiped out. Mm -hmm. And so the question then becomes is where could some of those expenses go instead? Now, we did get a win with um, medical in that it was um, you only got to deduct expenses that were over 10%. That's been dropped to 7.5% for a few years. We'll see how long that lasts. But there can be an advantage. The real one that I see is what I call tax expense planning. And that is if I've got expenses coming up, I want to try and lump those expenses into a single year and then say, hey, one year I take all those expenses, do my itemized deductions. The next year I don't take the expenses and I take maybe the standard deduction. Mm -hmm. So there's some real planning opportunities here, and you really need to be looking at it. I would be willing to bet that a ton of people are going to be leaving money on the table just simply because they'll continue doing things the way they've always done it, and the rules have changed. You can't win a game if you're not playing by the right rules. With that, what sort of questions are you advising your clients to ask their tax professional? Well, the first and easiest one would be <laughs> – what uh, what do I need to do to create a pass through entity? Mm -hmm. uh, one of these entities that will will allow me that twenty percent write off. 
And I mean, it goes even a step further. The reality is every time they come out with a new tax bill, a new tax law, a new tax ruling, there are always winners and losers. The trick is you just have to realize who the winners and losers are and just become one of the winners mm -hmm. because they can't say Joe can pay, has to pay taxes and Steve doesn't. They can describe and say, if you do this, you don't have to pay taxes. Well, you just do what those people are doing. When it comes to things like tax loss harvesting, has any of that changed? So the trade-off on – so tax loss harvesting, just to talk about what that is, basically the concept is simply that you have things that have not done as well, um, which is hard to find, frankly, uh, uh, right yeah, now. If you've got true. things that are in loss positions, you probably need a new advisor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean the market, <laughs> the market's done nothing but go up for the last decade. Up until the last uh, you know, just short period of time, we started to see some more volatility. But the idea is you sell dogs, you sell losers – at the same time, you sell some winners. The idea is that you have a – even though you had a gain on some stock, you had a loss on the other. So you're in a tax-neutral position. Mm -hmm. um, that still works, and I would still consider using that strategy as time goes on. Okay. Now that I've got you really warmed up, right, and, and you've had a chance to think about all of the things that you've already said, is there anything else that we need to know? Because you are the – you're the medium, right, Jim? I mean, you're the person who, uh, I, as I, somebody who I know is not a tax professional, you are not a CPA, but you deal with this all the time. Are, is there anything else that's come to mind? Maybe a question I didn't ask you that uh, our, our listeners need to know. So I would say there's a couple of things that I'm thinking of as I'm sitting here. Number one is to realize that this is temporary. The rules, as I mentioned right up front, for individuals are temporary, meaning that either Congress has to sign a new tax bill to extend these or they're going to go back to the way they were in 2017. So that's the first thing to be aware of is this. The taxes change every single year. If you're doing your planning and your strategies based on the things that you knew about the way taxes used to be last year, two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, you are sadly behind and the likelihood is you're probably paying more in taxes than you need to. The other thing is when it comes to tax planning, it's actually quite simple. It really is fairly simple once you understand the rules of the game. If you don't know the rules, find somebody who does so that you're basically on the leading edge of this. There's some great opportunities out there and some great things that you can do to really take advantage of the rules. And they were set up that way for you to do that. As long as you follow the rules, you can set up a tax plan where you pay less taxes than you would have otherwise paid. And that's what it's all about. Gotcha. All right. Well, Jim, thank you very much for giving us a great and uh, impactful summary of uh, President Trump's new tax plan. My pleasure. I hope that uh, made some sense. Absolutely. I think that makes uh, a lot of it a lot clearer. So uh, for Jim Black, this is Matt Halloran. And if you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, make sure that you do uh, by clicking the subscribe now button below, because that way, every time Jim comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up immediately on your listening device.